I'm going to go through and run the rack on this AV71 here. I'll show you how I do it. It's for educational purposes only. Do not do what I do unless you know what you're doing. Uh, don't follow my instructions. I'm just showing you what I do. I'm not recommending that you do this or telling you to do this. And if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Uh, so what we're going to do, the fuel injectors all run on this same rack here. So we need to make sure that the input on all of them is exactly the same as we go. And it's usually not. So that, to get it, everything kind of in sync together. So the first thing we need to do is renew, re remove anything that's putting tension up against the rack because it's all about feel. We need to get all that stuff off of there. So the first thing that we will do is remove uh, the cover here for the idle screw. Uh, these are copper washers on there. Double check that you still have them on there. A lot of those things disappear on these engines and then somebody replaces it with like a lock washer and it ends up leaking oil. Uh, so the copper washer will see it, seal it from leaking oil. Okay, if you throw a pair of vice grips on right here because that shaft will spin and then you just want to break that nut free. I've already done it. And then this is an Allen wrench in the end of the idle screw. Or you can do it by finger once that's loose. So I'm going to back off the idle screw. You're not going to screw up your governor by doing this. Nothing's going to fall apart inside there. You just want to remove it to enough far enough to feel the tension come off of it. I have no tension right there, so I know that's far enough. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you have an air stop or a stop on here, that, that cylinder might be pushed out all the way forward in that position, and that would be locked up and needs to be off. And you need to make sure you see daylight between the two. So I've adjusted mine so I actually see daylight between the two. If you don't and it's all the way touching it, just loosen up that little nut right there a little bit and spin it and then retighten it down. You want just a little bit of daylight. It just, you know, even just enough to run some dental floss or something through there. And that's fine. I'm going to disconnect the back rack for right now. So I'm going to come up here, pop the cotter pin out, pull that, and move this out of the way. I don't want any tension or input back there whatsoever right now because it's all about feel. I want to be able to feel as much as I can and get everything synced in on here. Okay, I used to just hold it. So I'd have my hand on here, hold this in the full open position, and when you start turning the screws on the, um, the tube here, what happens is once it gets all the way full, then it starts to counteract and push the other way, and, you would, and this, you would feel this start to spin back the opposite direction. And as soon as you felt that tension starting to go back the other way, that's when it was tight. Well, um, Ray Cox taught me, showed me this weekend that if you use a long pair of ice grips on there, clip it on there, now when you're holding it, what well, you used to be able to just feel a little tiny movement right here, well it's magnified ten times more sensitive by the holding the end of the vice grips here, and I have these really long vice grips, so that makes it even, even more sensitive. So again, holding it in the full position, I'm going to come down here, I'm going to go through and loosen all of my screws. So let's go through and loosen all of these. Butterfingers. Once you loosen the top one, the second one is already going to be loose, so don't panic and think that, oh, I must, you know, I can't believe that was loose the whole time. It wasn't. So I just put a couple turns on them. Just, you'll see the injector start to come across loose there. You'll see it moving. So I'll just go down the rack and loosen them all. Again, just about two screw, two turns is fine. You just don't, you don't want it inputting at all. You don't want to reverse tension, anything like that. So I've got those all loose there. Okay, so number one. Let's get in there so you can see this. If I hold it in the full position, I should be able to put my finger on here, and this should not wiggle at all. It should be just really tight. So let me come over here. This one, let's see if I can show you here. Since I've already loosened the screw, it's definitely going to be loose. But there, see how it wiggles like that? You don't want that. So if you put, if you, if it's tight, that's what we're going for is to get that tight so it doesn't wiggle. And then once they're all the same. Okay, so. As I go in here, hopefully you can see that. You're going to watch that injector input right there. As I tighten the screw down, you'll see it moving, and it's going into the full position, going into the full, it's moving into the full, into the full, and right when it gets to the end of the full position, I start to feel tension get against the screw head itself, but what's happening the injector is no longer moving, and it's pushing against the rod, and if you watch the vice grips here, you're going to see a move. So that's me turning that screw is doing that. So when you're feeling that tension way out on the end of the vice grips, just start. It means the injector is bottomed out all the way full, and now it's counter acting against that, and you can feel it. So it's all about feel. Just right there. Now, when I tighten the other screw, it's probably going to move it just a little bit. So you want to snug it, and you're not like going all ape shit on those, so don't strip them out. And same thing, I'm going back and I'm double checking, loose, tight, loose, tight, just wiggle it right there, and then I'm going to snug it again. Okay, now, put my finger on there, 
That sucker is going to be snug on there, and absolutely it is. Good. Boom. Let's go on to the next one. Same thing's going to happen. I see that it's hanging low, so it's actually not in the full position yet. As I turn it, it's going up into the full, up into the full, up into the full. And right there, I can feel the tension on it. Now, I want to go ahead and move my vice grips down here to the to the actual rod itself. So I'm going to disconnect them from up there. I'm going to move them down here. I'm going to disconnect the governor. Get that the hell out of the way. Now, doing the exact same thing. Again, it's all about feel. So now I've got the feel right here. It's a little bit more sensitive for me. And I'm going to turn that screw, watching the injector ride up. And right when it maxes out, now I feel it start to counteract. Second one. Okay. I'm going to go wiggle it, and that sucker is tight. That thing is not moving. A lot of force against it. Come back and check number one. Absolutely still tight. Still tight. It's easy to, for them to loosen back up, especially when you go to hit that second screw. It's easy to re-loosen it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go on to the third and the fourth real quick, but it's all the same thing. I don't even know that I need to show you this, but uh, same thing. Again, these are Make sure that they're loose, plenty loose, both sides. Turn it, you see the injector moving, it's getting up to the top. Right when it stops, you start to feel the tension against there. My vice grips are turning, so that's too far. Let's snug the bottom one. Don't go ape shit on them if I didn't say that. You can strip those out, they're just a little bit of pressure. Read your book for the torque specs. Snug, snug. Actually, number one's loose now. Must probably went too far in. Yep, I saw it move there. That's why you want to keep going back, even though I thought for sure the other ones, oh, they're absolutely done. They weren't. Okay. And then I would do the last one too, but I don't need to show you in the video, that's how it works. Okay. Um, and then you want to do the same exact reverse procedure for the top. So go back to it on the, make sure you hook up that, that bar again. Hook up the governor. Uh, I would throw the vice grips on the throttle, full position right there, get really sensitive. Uh, and that way that everything gets synced in all together evenly. And then put it back together, run that back in. You want to set your idle to 600 RPM, you need to have a tachometer to do that. Um, this particular engine, the alternator won't charge unless it's at least 550 RPM, so you need to, it's pretty critical on that. And then just a little bit of snug back on there. Make sure you have vice grips on there so you don't spin that inside. And don't jack with anything else on your governor unless you're qualified to do so. And then I'd hook my air throttle back up here, and that would be all ready, good to go.